Today we will be cleaning wooden recorders and as you can see these are the materials I'll be using. So it's only for wooden recorders because plastic recorders we wash them under the tap and we will start working on the block. We will use some water and cotton swabs. We will also need kitchen paper. Here we've got some cotton cloth, a small and a big cleaning stick for either smaller or bigger recorders. Same goes for the stick which we'll use to get the block out. The hammer has one side that's normal and one side with some padding on it. Later on we will also need some oil like sweet almond oil or linseed oil. First of all we're going to work on the block. We will take it out. You have to be very careful for this part, the labium. It's very sensitive. Also be careful for this part. We cannot allow any oil to touch the block. It will form a layer and your block won't absorb condensation in the future. Now you can do the oil in this part of the head joint, in the middle joint and the foot joint. Good, let's go for it. By the way, I also have sandpaper for the rounded part of the block in case it's too tight. Never the flat part. It's also handy to have a sock at hand. At this point the oil should be far away. There you go, we're starting with the block right now. So you see these three sticks. This one is particularly long because it's for one piece recorders. Like this one. Or even this one <laughs> didn't even fit in, uh, in the video. So these are too long and sometimes too thin for the normal stick. As you can see, doesn't fit. But the long stick does fit. Now we're taking the block out. This one will fit pretty well. We take the sock, put it around, hold it well and just on the edge of the head joint and we give impulses with the stick. No pushing, just impulses. This one doesn't come out easily, so this is where we take our hammer. And in one blow it's out. Here is the block. You can see the rounded part and the flat part. And this is what a blockless recorder looks like on the inside. I'm taking the block now. It's made from cedar wood, a much more absorbent kind of wood. You should hold it uh, by its rounded part. We're going to clean the flat part with water. You can see that there is some dirt over here. And actually it's important to brush your teeth before playing the recorder to prevent dirt and mold. So we're cleaning the straight part, not the rounded part, which should stay dry. As long as dirt is coming off, you'll have to keep rubbing with clean cotton swabs and water. Be very careful for the diagonal edge on the lower side of the block. You don't want it to be too wet because the block expands when it takes up humidity and you have to wait several days before you're able to fit the block back into the head joint. You can actually use a little bit of force while rubbing, just be careful. Uh, this part cannot be damaged or your recorder might lose its sound. 
Be careful with your fingernails too. At the end, it's good to go over it again with a dry cotton swab so it doesn't stay too wet. As you can see here, there is some mold. If your recorder has mold too, go to check out my problem shooting video. Dry wood won't get mold very easily, so it's important that your recorder gets time to dry out after playing. Drying the recorder with a cleaning stick and a cloth, separating the joints of the recorder in an open space, out of its box, but rather not too close to the heating. So you only clean the flat part of the windway, not the rounded part. Be very careful with the labium, it's so delicate you could easily destroy the sound. That means that in the area around the labium we work with care. It's better to have an upward or sideward movement while rubbing than a downward one towards the end of the labium. So control your movements. At all time know what you're doing. There you go. Quite dirty. <laughs> it's best to let it dry for a day or two. In this case, the outside part of the labium is dirty enough to clean it with water too. If I know I'm going to give it a day or two to dry, I can do this. If not, I would wait for the oiling part and I'd clean it directly with oil. But for that, the wood has to be completely dry, because the oil will seal the water inside, which would cause mold. Also, don't forget to regularly clean the part where your lips close off the recorder. It's best just to wipe it away every time after playing. But if you're cleaning it anyway, you can also uh, clean it with a cotton swab. So this is done for now. I get a dry cotton swab and pass over it again. I cannot repeat it enough. Be very careful with the labium. This one is done. Now I would wait for several hours, the best is even a day or two. Just to show you, in order to put the block back, we let it slide into its socket. It should be correctly placed at that point. Then we use the pressure of our thumb and push it in. This one doesn't get in right now, uh, the block has expanded because of the water. So the best is to wait. We'll just let that dry. So why don't we use oil? It forms a layer that protects the wood from humidity coming in, but also going out. So the cedar wood of the block wouldn't absorb the condensation of our air anymore, which means the windway would be clogged very easily when playing on the recorder. This is a theory I learned, but I heard some people have other theories. At least my theory has always maintained my recorders in good shape. I have instruments of 20 years old that are still doing perfectly well. For major problems, I've always sent my recorders to the original instrument maker, unless I saw another instrument maker I could trust uh, that he or she would do the same job or even better. This is a Tenor Renaissance recorder with a long body and for this recorder, in order to get the block out, I needed a broad stick with maximum surface, so I got the block out easily without harming it. If you notice, a block doesn't come out by the way the frequency doesn't change at all when you try to take it out, don't force it. 
bring it to an instrument maker. If the inside of the windway, not the block but the flat part of the head joint, is so terribly dry that you're afraid it will tear, there is the possibility of oiling it. But this has so many risks that I would first take it to someone with experience or an instrument maker to show you. It would require a minimum amount of oil with no remainders whatsoever in any corner, well cleaned off and dried afterwards, so there's no oil lying on top of the wood, and letting it dry for at least two to three days before placing the block back. Okay, here I'm showing you a detail of a block of another recorder. I hope you can see that there is a little cut, though very superficial. I do need to keep an eye on it. If it gets deeper or longer with time, I'll have to send it to an instrument maker. I'm not able to do that myself. So some simple things we can do ourselves, but others we definitely should leave to the professional. And while you're cleaning, don't mix up your blocks. It's actually a good idea to place each block next to its own head joint. When I hold a block, I have to hold it by its rounded part. In that case, I won't be dirtying the straight part with the grease of my skin. Here we've got an example of a long recorder, which needs a longer stick to get the block out. Important, uh, the sticks you're using should have ends without any sharp edges. They should be completely smooth. When your cotton swab gets dirty, don't continue using it because you'll just swipe all the dirt into the block again. Just use a clean one. Here I've got a tenor recorder. I use the long stick for it. And what do we do when, as is the case here, the block comes out with difficulty? Well, um, when you take the block out, you have to listen if the frequency of the sound changes when you hit, because then it's moving. If you really don't notice any difference in the pitch of the ticking sound, then leave it to a professional. The most important thing to remind is that you have to use impact and not force. This one has a painted block. Sometimes you encounter these, it's no problem. Just uh, good to know. Okay, that's done for the moment. Now we'll just have to wait until the block is dry. Okay, welcome back. After a couple of hours at least, we should be able to put the block back. So we know that this one is a bit difficult. When first entering the block, it should slide in quite easily until a certain point. If it doesn't, probably it's not in its track. So then take it out and find its track. Or it's just too large. And then I use sandpaper for the round part of the block, not the flat. And just a bit. Once it's halfway in its track, we use the thumb to push it further in. And if we see it doesn't enter well, although it's in its track, that's where the hammer comes in. Not with this side, please, with the other side. And if it's your first time, do let someone with experience teach you before you go and split a block. We wouldn't want that now, would we? There's also the technique of using a stick with a smooth surface so not this one, placing it against the hollow part of the block, thus covering a bigger surface. And I think they use a hammer on it to give an impact, never force. But I'm going to do it on the little part. 
Um, it is a little bit risky though. So that's why if you don't know how to do it, go to professional or someone with a lot of experience. So what I don't want to use is force. I don't want to push. Instead, I use impact. You see, it just propels my hand down. It doesn't hurt it. It's important to hold the hammer at its end and just let it drop and use the swing in your favor. Then it only gives impact, not force. So in maximum three blows, it should be inside. If the block is too difficult to get in, then we can sandpaper the block a bit on the rounded part, just a little bit. Don't ever touch the straight part with uh, sandpaper. That's work for the instrument maker who knows what they're doing. Normally you can see where there's friction because those are the shiny parts on the block. I've got different grains of sandpaper, a rough one, a very fine one and even a rougher one. You should always finish with the finest sandpaper. In this case we're going to let it dry some more time. Here I show you a recorder where the block enters right away. In order to be sure you have to feel the surface up here to see if the block is completely aligned with the surface of the head joint. If it's totally smooth then you know it's in its place. between these two parts. If going outward you feel an edge, it means the block is too far inwards. Gently tap it into its right place with a stick. If going inward you feel the edge, it means the block hasn't entered enough. Then I either take it out more so I can use impact to get it in with the hammer or my thumb, or I could also try directly to push more and see if that works. And then I can always come back to use the stick once more to get it more out and push it in. If the block is very dirty on top, you can easily clean it with water. But remember, you can't use oil on that part unless it has dried completely, like a day or two. With this recorder, my Canassi Soprano, in fact, I should be more careful that it enters in its correct position because it wiggles. And this is interesting because I pushed it in too far, as you can see. So we tap it gently with the stick and then we need to feel again if it's correct. It needs just a tiny bit more. Now it's good. Perfect. Okay, after a day or two we put back the block. Here I tipped it in too far so again we use the stick to get it perfectly aligned. There you go. So we've come to the end of this video on taking care of the block. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Next video is about oiling the recorder, so click on it to continue. By the way, I've also made several videos on solving specific problems, so you can check them out too.